Hello there, and welcome to the Puffy Glass Baking Episode 2. My name is Anjali, and I am going to demonstrate for you how to bake or kiln cast puffy glass into molds. We will be filling a gravity mold in this episode. First, to introduce you to puffy glass. Puffy glass is a material that I discovered in 2005 when I was trying to combine fine particles of glass, which is considered to be a demanding and specialized and technically challenging material, with its counterparts um, that use what is seemingly thought of as a humble vocabulary, organic, low-tech, easily accessible materials used at home for baking, such as flour, eggs, oil, butter, onions, puffed rice, yeast, um, anything that you can eat. Um, so puffy glass is essentially a hybrid concocted from glass and baking ingredients like flour. And today I will use just the basic ingredients that it's flour and glass and to fill what I call a gravity mold. Let's start with preparing our materials. But before that, you should know that powdered glass is not good for your lungs. It is silica, and if you email me, I'm happy to show you what a particle of glass looks like under an electron microscope. Trust me, the glass, even at that scale, looks like a bigger shard wood, and not so good. Um, please wear a respirator while handling ingredients in their dry form. I always do, with the exception of this demonstration, because if I did, then you couldn't hear anything that I would say. Um, that kind of defeats the purpose. So um, I will not wear a respirator, but I expect you to do so when you work with puffy glass. I also use a double layer of latex gloves, um, just because I don't like getting microscopic shards of glass in the lines of my hand. Um, and have to eat them later with food. Again, not so good. And if you want to think about what could happen to the lining of your stomach with sharp grains of glass, that might do the trick. Um, all right, so I'm going to get these gloves on, and then we can talk about ingredients. What I'm going to do is combine 40% um, by volume of glass with 60% of flour. Um, now the variable depends on the kind of texture you would like, and um, you know I can do 50-50, I can do 60-40, I've even done the 70 and 30, going either way. Um, and you want, you know, the texture of what you get will depend on the mix that you use. But you know, for this one, let's go with the generic 40% of glass and 60% of flour. So in this bowl, I have glass powdered in a ball mill. And I am going to measure it. So I'm going to put, let's say, a cup for the time being. Okay. So sticking a cup, and this is my mixing bowl. The one thing you should remember is that this is a process that relies on similarity in particle size. So if your glass particle is significantly bigger than the flour particle is, chances are that your puffy glass will not be the same as it might be if both particle sizes were the same. Um, so that's something you want to watch out for. So if you find that you're not making puffy glass the way you want it to be, your first um, stop to check for trouble would be, are they the same size? Is it because my glass is bigger or smaller or too fine for the flour? Okay, um, so this is flour, and it's just regular, brandless, all-purpose, enriched, unbleached flour. Um, I have used whole wheat flour. I have used, um, I need a little more. I have used rice flour. I've used all sorts of flour, but you know, enriched flour works just as well, and it's probably the cheapest anyway. So. That's a little more there. I'm going to put this away. And you want to mix the dry ingredients just like you would for, you know, anything um, that you're making, like bread. Okay, so I'm going to mix this. And this is water. You're going to add that as needed. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm kneading now. Pour some water in there. Okay. Okay. 
again, you don't want to add too much water. There isn't a calculation of water that I use. At this point, I'm using instinct as someone who bakes bread um, to decide how much water needs to go into this recipe till my bread feels good or the dough feels good. Um, you just want to mix your glass and your flour powders um, nicely so they're not, you know, chunk of glass and chunk of um, flour. So you want to mix them up. You can use a sifter to mix them if you want to. Um, the whole point of this process for me is that you kind of smush two things that come from very different worlds and create something that's absolutely wondrous and problematic. And um, you don't have to be overly finicky about it in terms of precision um, in the process. So it's fairly forgiving in some ways, and this is one of those fairly forgiving stages. So I'm mixing this, and my dough is forming. A little more water will do it. Again, now if you find that you added too much water, you can add a little more dough, you can add a little more flour. It's really not going to change that much. So what I did was add a little too much water, okay? And so I'm going to just, for kicks, add, say, a little more glass, okay? Scatter it over it and add some flour. Now. If you notice, I'm using the same cup for the flour and the glass, and I'm doing that just because it's a demo and I don't have too much space in this kiln room. Um, I usually have two separate glasses and a whole, like, completely different setup for the flour and the glass. Um, in any case, what I'm trying to get at is do not use the flour that you use for puffy glass in your kitchen, okay? Try to buy a bag for puffy glass and don't use it in the kitchen. Um, not so good. Okay, so I added excess water so that I could show you that it's okay to add more powder, which I did, and now it looks fantastic. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll this out on the table, okay? What we have here is dough, right? For all of you who are bakers, this feels like dough um, that you would make for an artisan type bread not the quick breads. For those of you coming to this from a glass perspective or an art history perspective, think of this as a pot de verre um, that's stretchy, or think of it as the ancient Egyptian faience with, in which um, silica paste was filled into molds to make those little blue statues we see in museums. So I have dough, and you know, just like clay or dough, there are so many things you can do with this. If you think of puffy glass as your raw material, I have used it as coils to hand build things. I have enclosed it within tiles. Um, I've made hollow core forms. But today, we're going to look at a different technique. The detail to remember here is that puffy glass, while referencing clay and pot de verre and faience and baking and all of that is none of it because in its process of firing, you're dealing simultaneously with opposing forces. Um, the tendency of glass or silica to fall down, to flow into a mold, a downward pull, gravity, and the tendency of bread to want to rise, to fight gravity when it's baked. Um, and I find that particularly fascinating because I think it's unique to the composition of this particular material. So we're going to use that and um, work with a gravity mold. I'm going to show you what that is in one second. So to 